this one, uh, I just want to kind of talk you up tonight. Is that all right? Yeah. Because uh, I think uh, if we really understood uh, how valuable we are, that would change a lot of things. I, th I think we miss that sometimes, or we let we let life kind of determine a lot for us. We let circumstances or people determine a lot of how we are. But uh, when we really see that our value comes from that God paid a price for us. I mean, God's God. I'm saying, you know, we're here. We are. I don't know. I'm. I kind of. I'm not a horse trader, but. I've, I've traded a few horses around. You know, if I'm going to make a purchase, I, I don't even want to. You, you can ask Rachel. It doesn't matter where I go or what. I don't want to pay market value for something. <laughs> don't be laughing at me, y'all. Y'all, uh, I want to feel like I'm getting a good deal. You know, I want to get what I'm paying for. I, I want to feel like whatever I'm purchasing, I'm. Get, I'm getting a good price for it. You know what I mean? And I'm just saying that God paid the price for you and me. And He's, and he's not foolish. He's God. He knows what He's doing. He knows the value of something. And He wrote the check. Do you know how much He paid for you? Yes, sir. Now, why don't we let that decide what our value? Because you say, okay, I got this horse for sale, right? And I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna ask, unless Joe, he might have a mule. I don't know. He has fifteen thousand for that mule. You know, he think, whoa. whoa. See, some of you already said, whoa. Now you said there ain't no mule worth fifteen thousand, right? But now you can say, well, it's Joe's mule. He can ask whatever he wants to for it, right? He he said he he thinks it's worth fifteen. Nobody buys it, but. So he's decided what. But what about when somebody now comes along and writes the check and lays the money down for the mule for fifteen thousand? Now it's not just Joe's opinion. Now it's not just the 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 value has been established. It's not just say, well, you can make up whatever number you want. No, somebody paid the price, so the value's been established. It's not no longer up for debate. You might think it's not worth that, but the guy that wrote the check says that it is. You're more valuable than you think you are. I'm telling you, check's been written and signed. God traded Jesus for you. That means he values you more than he valued the life of Jesus. Man, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. I'm just saying, we if we could understand how valuable we are to him, that's that's a big deal. And so I just could keep trying to put that in our hearts because because there's so much power in what we believe. And if you're condemning yourself or down on yourself or you know we've let. We've let life speak. I, I got to keep telling this because everything else will say otherwise. We've let we've let people determine who and how we are. We've let life and circumstances and what didn't go right determine who we are and how we are. Our identity has been formed by life and circumstances, and life and circumstances can be a liar. Why don't we just let the truth of who He is determine who we are and how we are? That's why I always say, I, I know you guys think I just say it because it's habit or what else, and it, it kind of is, but that's why I always ask you uh, about everybody good. I want you saying, I'm good. Oh, yeah, you're good. I say it all the time. I, I say it all the time. You're good. Because I want you to say that. Believe that. Because you'd be surprised how many people. No, you won't be surprised. You hear it every day. You say, hey, how you doing? Oh, well. You know, they'll give you the longest version of everything that's wrong with them that you could possibly get, right? You guys telling it right? And so, I mean, I'm just like, I'm, I'm over that stuff. I started in on this, too, with my granny up there. Oh, she she's come out with some, something about herself, you know? I finally just got to the point where I said, was well, that what the Bible says about you? Come on. Is that what the Bible says about you? 
well, I got this and I got that. Right? Oh, really? Is that what the Bible says about you? <laughs> now, you going to think this is insensitive or what? I don't know, but this is just where you got to get to. I've decided for me. Whatever the Bible says about it, whatever the heart of God says about it, whatever the life of Jesus says about it, that's my truth. You can get all kinds of other opinions if you want to, but they don't know. They're, they're not God. Come on, we let all this other... We come in here, Jeff sings, and we sing, Jesus is Lord, but we let everything else dictate. Come on. Ouch. I didn't mean for that to sound mean. Just saying. We let everything else decide, and then we say He's Lord. What if we really did let Him be Lord? What if what He said goes? What if His opinion mattered more than any other opinions? Even your own. You're valuable. Right. <laughs> I'm going to keep on telling you this. I'm going to show you why. I found this. Uh, I found this. You, I, I, I've shared this with you before, but it's been a long time. And I've... I was chewing on it all week long, so I'm just going to give it to you, alright? You, you just get whatever I'm getting. Uh, you, you probably figured that out by now if you've been here very long. I don't, uh, I don't uh, have sermons. Uh, whatever he's doing to me is what you're getting. So, uh, this is Matthew 12, 33. Matthew 12, 33. Who's ever heard the statement, or there's like a whole circle out there uh, called Word of Faith. I heard that. Word of Faith, like, you know, it's it's a whole kind of, I don't know what you call it. It's not really a denomination, but it's just a, you know, like we're probably considered grace people. Right? <laughs> I don't know that's funny to me. I just like it. But anyway, there's like Word of, word of Faith it's kind of that type of a label, you know. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm not against that. I'm not saying I'm probably, I'm probably one of them to, in a way. But I, I've come in with the foundation of grace into that thing because that, there's, there, there stands to be like, you know, there's power in what you say, and you've heard me say that, and there is, and all that. But it's like you, I see a lot of people that go after that, but really all they've done is retrain their brain to say certain things. You can spend enough time retraining your brain to say certain things, but there's not that much power coming out of your brain. There's some. I'm not saying there's not any. There's power in what you say. But, you know, but I'm saying when, when what you say comes out of your heart from where you really believe, that's where the power is. You can just train yourself to say certain things, and that there'll be probably some benefit to that. But when you're saying what you say because it's in your core, your very fiber is made, it's what you believe, then there's power. Then there's power. All right, so listen to this. This is what Jesus is talking about. He said this, Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. He's talking to Pharisees here, religious dudes. He said, you brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Right? Some translations say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever's in your heart is what's coming out your mouth. I know you might like rewire and train yourself when you're around certain people to do something. But just at day to day, every day, I, you know, just normal, everyday conversation, whatever's inside you, whatever, he's talking about a tree. A tree is really like what your belief system is. It's, it tree starts as a seed, so it grows roots and it grows and it produces fruit. It's like whatever seeds have been planted inside of you and been allowed to water and grow and produce. If it's a bad seed, it's going to grow into a bad tree and produce bad fruit, and you got bad, negative, death coming out your mouth, right? Because it's what you believe. And whatever you believe and whatever you're saying, the tree's producing fruit. 
I'm saying you could be born again, saved, whatever you want to call it, go to church, and, and, and so many seeds that are producing bad tree and bad fruit coming out. It's producing bad fruit. Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven one day. Doesn't mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about life here. I'm saying you can change what you believe and get good seed like I'm giving you. Let that grow roots and water it and produce a tree. And that tree grows up and fruits start producing. You can have good fruit or bad fruit. You can have good fruit or bad fruit. But don't change the fruit. See, it's what religion does. Religion says, okay, we're going to change the fruit. Work on your fruit. Trim your fruit. Uh, polish your fruit. Do this with your fruit. The topic of the, of the, of the illustration is not the fruit. The topic is the tree. Yes. Change the tree. If the fruit's no good, if what you got going on in your life is not good, change the tree. Amen. And you change the tree by getting different seed. By allowing who He is and who He says you are to become your truth. And that births and produces fruit. I am what He says I am. He, Jeff sings that song. I have what He says I have, right? I'm just saying... You know, guys like poor old Joe Osteen, now religious guys that people just, I mean, they run him down the road and bad-mouthing everybody else. And you know what he's doing every, every time? He's out there sowing good seed. Sowing good seed. If you got bad tree business going on, you're promoting bad fruit and all that, you can't stand that. Listen to this, Proverbs 23, 7. It's in your Bible. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's right. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And here we've got a great, big, old, powerful, good God. A Father that wants all good for us and wants to bless us and wants us to experience life and all of our wildest dreams to come true. Wants us to live and realize our full destiny and be a, a champion in life and, and live in victory and experience all this stuff. And He's up there with all this. And we say, well, it must not be God's will for my life. Jesus is saying, if your tree's bad... The fruit's going to be bad. It has no, it has nothing to do with what the will of God is for your life. The will of God for our life is good. Yes. Yes. I already told you how much value we have to Him, right? Now you're gonna you're gonna spend uh, hundred thousands of dollars on a Lamborghini and just sling mud all over it and treat it like terrible and run it down the gravel roads and all. No, what you value, you're gonna take care of. What you value, you want good for, right? I'm telling you, the goodness of God is hindered by what we believe. It's not, well, just God's in control, whatever it is, whatever it is. No, He's, he's put good seed out there for us so that we can get good seed and grow good tree and fr good fruit produced from a good tree. If you don't like your fruit, all you got to do is pluck the seed. Jesus said this, every seed that was not planted by my Father is getting plucked up. Amen. Come on, he said too much stuff about this. Every seed that's been planted in you by, by people, every seed that's been planted in you by circumstances that didn't go the way you thought it was, and the enemy came along with a lie and, and dropped it right in on top of that. All that stuff, all that what someone said about you in the third grade, or what someone didn't do for you, or what someone <laughs> Uh, did do to you. All this stuff. Well, now I'm not making light of anything. I'm not trying not to be insensitive. Stuff has happened. People are a mess. Life's been a mess. There's been a lot of bad stuff happen. Why do we let that decide who we are and speak louder than the truth? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know what God's after? Your thinker. 
It's after your thinker. If I can get your thinker, he's saying, I'm trying to get your thinker right. Listen to this, Proverbs 4.23. I won't just leave you with one. Listen to this one. Guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. I'm reading out the Bible. Guard your heart. What's your heart? That's where those seeds are getting planted. That's where this tree's growing. That's where all this fruit's coming out. And whatever your heart is full of is what you're saying. Jesus also said, it's not what goes in a man's belly that defiles him. It's what comes out. Guard your heart above all else because out of it comes the course of your life. Man, I'm not trying to put pressure on you or say, man, oh, great, now it's all up to me. Now look, I'm not saying that. You know, the old covenant was about you and what you do. It's all about you, focused on you. Thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt. You shall, you shall not, you shall, you shall. All you, right? New covenant is I will, I will, I will. God said, I will be your God. I will remember your sin no more. I will, see, it's God's deal now. It's God's, and so He's He's got everything sitting there ready for us if we will open our hearts to His truth and let Him sow seed into us. He, he provides the water. He provides the seed. He provides the, the stuff that's going to make the, tro the tree grow. And then He's going to produce the fruit. All we got to do is figure out what truth we've had before and what seed's been planted. I mean, I'm not listening to this lies anymore. I'm not letting other things decide how I am. I'm not letting circumstances tell me how I'm going to be doing today. Because if circumstances are your measure of how He loves you, then it's going to be up and down all the time. You're going to be wondering where, what in the world's going on, or that's a good day. Well, pray for me, brother. I'm just saying, know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That's what Jesus said. Abide in my word. That's what He said. Abide in my word. My word. What it is I'm saying. If you abide there, you'll know the truth, and the truth makes you free. That's why I tell you how valuable you are. That's see, let that get in there. Don't let don't let other stuff and other voices and all this stuff say, I ain't valuable. Ain't nobody ever loved me or wanted me or nothing else like that. Pluck, pluck that out. <laughs> But listening to that nonsense. Am I telling it right or not? Yes. Does anybody want some of this? This yes. help somebody? We don't have to just live old, normal old, woe is me life. He's, he's got so much. I, I read one time of a guy, he had a dream. I, I, some of you remember this. I don't remember who which one it was. But this guy had a dream and, and he ended up go up to heaven and he was in this great big warehouse. Uh, you, you couldn't even see the end of it either way. Warehouse there, and this angel was showing him around his aisle after aisle after aisle of e everything you can ever imagine and he's like, what is all this stuff, you know? I mean, he had body parts, he had uh, cars, he had buildings, it was so much stuff in there you couldn't even see the end of it either direction you went. It was it was just high as you couldn't even see the top. He said shelves, just uh, more stuff than you can ever even imagine or think of. It's like what is all this? And he said this is the angel said this is a warehouse for for all the stuff that people didn't believe for. Mm. All the unclaimed blessings that it was the Father's heart to disperse.
Now, I don't know about you, but that prayer Jesus said, every seed that was planted in you that was not planted by my Father is getting plucked up. I want that. Y'all want that? Yes. I want a good tree in me. Yes. You can tell a tree by its fruit. You know, I, I can, you know, I can listen to you talk for just a little while and figure out. You've got in your life whatever it is you're saying. I don't mean when you're in here in front of everybody and you've got your best, your best trained behavior on. I'm talking about Monday morning. You wake up and you're... <sighs> Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And your mouth is producing fruit. Now this is kind of tough, I know. I'm not putting pressure on you. I'm just saying let's be hungry for it and let him do it. I don't want to just live normal old life. I, I got fed up with that. I, I'm telling you, I was about probably 29, 30 years old. I went to church my whole life. Nobody ever taught me nothing like this. They told me to behave. <laughs> I heard a million and one sermons about y'all to be behaving and try harder to behave. And so I either he, he got two options there. You either are too honest and you run the other way and you never come back, or you stay and pretend. Pretended. I'm not. So I mean, I'm. I'm glad. I got a lot of word in me through all that. I'm not saying that I regret it all. I'm saying I, I learned a lot of Bible. But time I'm 29, 30 years old, I'm just like, you know what? What? I've been to church every time the doors open. I've done everything they've said to do. I've tried my hardest. I rip. I'm not a hypocrite trying to get by with something. I really do want to be whatever God wants me to do. I, I love God the best that I know how. I really want to be what He says that, he, that, he, that I can be. But I'm, I'm doing all this and driving myself crazy. And I'm no, I'm, no, I'm no more better off than some dummy out here that don't even know there is a God. Okay, somebody I can't spell Jesus and I'm just as broke, I'm just as sick, I'm just as miserable, just as defeated. And I said, I'm, I said, I'm right over here in my driveway, I can take it to the spot. I said, if, you know, I said, God, you know I believe in you. And you know I respect you. But if this is what it is, I'm out. Whatever that means for me, it'll just have to mean for me, because I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of being a failure at this and trying to learn how to pretend like I'm not and then go sell what's not working for me to my neighbor. <laughs> Some of y'all been there. And from that point, it's like he said, okay, finally giving up on yourself and your religious stuff. Yes. Yes. You want to really try me? Because there's a whole lot more than what you thought there was. Oh, and so then he started showing me what grace was and what gift of righteousness was and what faith really is. It changed my whole life. What did he do? He reached in and took that old tree, throw that on the brush pile, and put truth inside it. And now Amen. truth's inside of me. And that truth growed and fruit changed everything. Changed everything. Changed the way I talk. You know, in Mark 16 says this, those that believe in my name speak with new tongues. Now I'm not saying that that don't mean praying in tongues or what. I'm just saying it can mean more than that. It means, you know what, I'm talking different than I used to talk. I'm not saying the things that I used to say. You won't catch me. If, if, this has been my prayer for since then. I don't want anything coming out of my mouth that's contrary to what's in this book right here. Amen. You won't hear me saying I'm sick. 
You won't hear me saying I'm broke. I really, I, I don't, I don't talk too much negative. I don't, I don't, maybe, you know, I'm not saying I'm all the way there yet, but I, I don't want nothing that he, if he, if Bill Johnson said it like this, I don't want to have a thought, see, how's he say that? Let me get it right. I don't want to have a thought in my head about me that he's not having in his head about me. Amen. I don't want to have a thought running through my head. They can run through. The enemy will send them through, but it ain't going to land. <laughs> there ain't no thoughts going to land and become mine that he's not having about me in his head. It's time we get our opinions of ourselves up a little higher. Mm -hmm. Now listen. If you think that will create arrogance, you're wrong. It creates humility. Yep. Especially if you tried it a long time on your own stuff. When you get his stuff, it starts working. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Can we at least ask Him to do this in us? Yes. He yes. might want some of those prayers. Like, yes. you know, I don't want anything coming out of my mouth that's contrary to the Word of God. Not just because I've retrained my switchboard, but because it's actually what I believe. He's changed what I believe. He's changed me to, to, to believing in Him. Believing in Him means I now have to believe in me because He believes in me. Wow. He believes in me. Now I'm going to start believing in me. I'm not beating myself up no more, nitpicking and negative self talking and all this stuff. I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. That's what he said. I just decided to believe it. And now I'm going to spend the rest of my life on a search to find out what it means for me to be the righteousness of God and live that out as a son of God. Yes, sir. The tree going to get big. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Mack told me one time, uh, he said, you know what, a great and mighty oak at one time was just one little nut that just wouldn't quit. <laughs> happening or whether you don't, I don't know. Sometimes that stuff's got to be known. I don't know. I don't, I'll leave that up to the smart people. Just saying. Nothing's impossible with God. And we've let what people did or didn't do decide who we are and how we are. We 
we've had Dan Moore say. You were trying to drink from an empty cup. Why do we let their dryness decide who we are? 